But now, Rob Rinder, lovely Rob, taking us back in time. As he heads behind bars, now this is a fascinating brand new series, is exploring the secrets of Britain's most famous, or I should say infamous, prisons. Is this your first time seeing Dartmoor? Yeah, first time since the 90s being back. It's still very scary looking. Needs a paint job. <laughs> <laughs> there was a riot here in the 90s. Mm. And there were various recommendations, including more staff, better conditions. Did you see any of that? No. I didn't see any changes. You had no toilet in your cell, so you did all your business in a bucket. Rob joins me now. This is such a brilliant documentary. Mm. It's, um, it felt to me that the first time I really knew what it was like to be inside and what it was like to experience that. Um, yeah. And it's, you know, it, it, to bring that to life is really important. I'm really proud uh, of this programme yeah. and I really hope everyone watches it. Um, and you put it exactly right. You know, people have strong opinions about prisons, mm -hmm. they should. You know, a lot of people out there will take the view Many people take the view that uh, prison should be just about punishment, and that makes sense, that makes sense yeah. especially if you've been a victim of crime. Mm. Been one of the fascinating things in my experience is when people get the chance to go into prisons, to listen, to hear a prisoner, to speak to the staff, everybody is forever changed and they take a different yeah. view. And this programme goes back in time and looks at the history over 200 years. And one of the things that we learn is that we've been doing the same thing over and over again expecting a different outcome. Yes. And that isn't justice to victims who don't want people who have done terrible things to them knowing they're going to come out into the community and do the same thing to somebody else. Mm. So what does it say about us as a society when we've got a situation in the country at the moment where Feltham, the Young Offenders Institute, right, full of young boys, mm. is the most violent prison in the country? It's about time to think about the past, listen to the people who are in there, yeah. think about victims, think about prisoners and know that in due course, these people are going to be our neighbours. Well, that's what's so fascinating about it, because you talk to prisoners mm. and you actually talk to... Because it's very difficult to get to the human being behind the crime, isn't right. it? You know, it's, it's hard, and, but you do that. Right. And every person has a human story. Of course. You know, human beings do terrible things sometimes, but listening and hearing them, there's not one of them that we will hear from in this program that says, you know, I didn't do it, right? Mm. They acknowledge the crime. They okay. acknowledge that they had to pay. They even acknowledge that uh, prison should be challenging. But what they also acknowledge that their lives were changed at a moment where perhaps they found education. Yeah. Perhaps they dealt with their addiction and the power of that is overwhelming. Mm. And that's what we have to realise. We do. It's about rehabilitation, but mm -hmm. it's very easy for us to say, oh, that's, that's what we should do. Mm -hmm. But the practicalities of it right. and the fact that prisons are stuffed to, stuffed to overflowing. Right. We're talking about people getting their sentences cut. But how do you feel about mm. James Timpson, for example, being the new prisoners officer, who knows about prisons, yep. who's worked with prisoners? I mean, are you hopeful that yeah, things really will am. change? I think it's a really exciting appointment. Yeah. It's not a political point of view. No. It's a really fascinating thing. When you speak to people across a political spectrum and of every view, and I emphasise, go and watch it. Take a chance. You can become a prison visitor. You might have a strong view, but people yeah. like him who have taken the opportunity to listen to the human stories mm -hmm. and employ prisoners to acknowledge that there is such low, late, low rates of literacy in prison, high rates of addiction, that we within our communities have the power to break the cycle yeah. of people committing offences. And that has the limitless effect mm. of changing an individual's life. And that does a greater and much more powerful service to victims and to us all. I mean, it costs more to keep somebody in prison than it does to put them through a very expensive private school. That's crazy. Right. That's so just crazy. Ask isn't about it? that. It's nuts. But we also have to acknowledge how complex it is and difficult. Mm. And I think sometimes people want easy answers. And now I think it's an exciting thing that we're moving to a moment where it's okay for us to understand that these questions are very, very difficult. Mm. Punishment on the one hand, you know, tough on crime, but also making sure that we're tough on, as I used to say, not just the causes, but what happens to those human beings, men and women, when they end up being 
part of our society. No, exactly, because they're going to get out, you're right. You're right. And what do we want? Do we want them to go unchanged? Yep. Do you want them to go out to become members of society sure. that'll actually help us? Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it really does make a, a lot of sense. It's a, it's a great Thank series. Thank you, I'm proud of it. It's affected my thinking too, and I'm proud of the courage of everybody that's taking part. I mean, the second programme takes place in Shrewsbury Prison. It's about the death penalty. And I've been an activist and I've taught about mm. this, and I feel very strongly, and still do, that it's never right for the state to take somebody's life. But there's a moment in that program where you'll see I'm confronted by the voice of Pierpoint, the last high hangman, yes. his voice. And I'm told to turn over a page as I discover that he was the hangman in Nuremberg. That was the trial where uh, eventually all of the Nazi war criminals were eventually sentenced to death. And he was the person who conducted those executions. As I turned over the page, I realised that one of the people who he had executed was the person responsible for torturing my own grandfather. Oh, no. Now, just pause for a second. It hasn't changed my mind about capital punishment. What I acknowledge, mm -hmm. and what we should all acknowledge, is this is complex. Yeah. And rather than shouting at each other and saying, prison should just be awful, it should mm -hmm. just be punishment, listen to the voices of the prisoners. Listen to the people mm -hmm. who have worked in the prisons and understand that there is a very challenging situation, yeah. but above all else, an opportunity to change human lives and make society better mm. for all of us. Gosh, that's chilling. Yeah. Absolutely chilling. Really and you're nice. right, you know, we, we, we can change our minds. Mm. We can't, you know, there are... It's one of these things everybody is, is different. I don't know how you do it. You do mm. so many things. I have to say to you, um, as somebody who's struggling with my second book, I love yours is great. Book. This is brilliant. I mean, um, and are you working on the third one? You, well, are, maybe. It's such a swat. Is, I am a bit of a swat. <laughs> well, I don't have kids, do I? So it's, it's much easier. You know, I used to have a farting dog. You know, oh, and so I know he's passed a away now. Dog. Yeah, I know, but apart from that... Get another one. I think I might. Get another dog. But this is great. This is great. You know how this starts, don't you, Lorraine? Mm, it starts with the death of a well-known um, daytime TV yes, presenter thanks. live on telly. Thanks for that, I would say. Kind of bit, 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 <laughs> bit sort of worried about that one. Yeah. But it's really good. I'm working on the third one, which is mm. fantastic. Thanks. And also, look, at you you did Strictly, yeah, didn't yeah. you? Um, and you you had a great time. I remember us talking about I loved it. The, the time that you had in Strictly and how fantastic it was. <laughs> so isn't it the case that it's all about who you're dancing with and it's also all about how they teach you? Well, I think and, it's also about the, com it's right? all about the community as well. I think, you know, some years you see it and say, oh, we're all best of friends and, you know, that's not necessarily the most sure. believable thing. Whereas in our year, we all, we all loved each other and we're still... Your well, year actually, was good. We're, we're close. It was Ed Balls, very famously. Um, you know, Louise, Greg, year. who I'm great friends with. Will, um, who, you know, has become a very close friend. Of course. Um, so it mattered, I guess, you know, what the community was like. But one thing I am mindful of, and I've spoken about a lot, is that you know, during the course of my time on Strictly, I appreciated, realised, it was quite a moment that I was having a a really different experience from some of the women contestants. Ah, there I was, that's I was, interesting. Well, I was in a car, um, mm -hmm. I think, with Laura Whitmore, and then she was on the way to It Takes Two. And there I was, I was putting on my pyjama bottoms and saying, I desperately want to win, and doing uh, my various forms of sex face, as uh, Craig Revel Horwood called my cha-cha at the time, thinking, isn't this <laughs> the most marvellous thing in the world? Because, you know, they put a camera in front of you, so how does it feel to go out in front of 10,000 people? Well, two years before I was doing murder trials, I was like, nobody died. <laughs> it's glitter. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Except then there was quite a serious moment, mm. as I realised that um, uh, Laura and other of the female contestants, right? It's changed a little bit, but it's still the same thing. People are commenting about what they wear, right? Are they in a sexual relationship with their mm. partner? And, you know, when you're experiencing the overwhelming sort of glitter and the lens, 10 million people watching it, I think that can be pretty overwhelming. That and the fact that it's just become slightly more competitive. I think you're right. Right, it used to be a show where, you know, right. people were complete amateurs. And now yes. I walked into the summer thing where you go and meet everybody. It was like a scene from fame. <laughs> I thought... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That, no, yeah. exactly. At least, Rob, I know you had the best mm. time. And looking back on it, when our gorgeous Fiona was doing it, Fiona mm. Phillips was doing it, and our yeah. Susanna and <laughs> Richard and all the gang were mm. doing it, they loved it. Great. They absolutely loved it. But it was. But I think you're right about the competitive thing. And, of mm. course, uh, the inquiry goes on, doesn't it? The BBC yeah. inquiry goes on um, into these allegations. And Britain Behind Bars, we must say, Britain yeah. Behind Bars is a secret history. It starts this Sunday, Thank Channel you know. 4, at 9 o'clock. Thanks. Make sure you watch. Thanks, Always Lorraine. a joy. You're Always a joy. a joy. By the way, I love your first book. Oh, shush. Wonderful. Oh, it's really, really <laughs> no, good. No, keep talking. It's, no, it's really, really good. Loving it. Thank you. <laughs>